Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to get your GPX on. That's right. A VUS Slice video on the cheapest, last, and worst TV made, CRT TV made. How could I not demonstrate this? Because it also is a variant of that. But ooh, it's a GPX. How fitting! And this example was a 1997 model. <laughs> okay, you know how GPX is. We got to do this. AMFM cassette television. Five inch black and white screen, MF and cassette recorder. No, well, it's actually a four and a half inch screen. <laughs> uh, I actually got this half price. This is what I got it for $7.99, so four bucks. Hey, I had could it, it, this was mint in the box. I, if I didn't say mint in the box. So, list of features: five inch black and white picture tube, six button cassette recorder. Automatic level control, receives AM FM radio broadcast, three-way power system, built-in recharger circuitry, external video input jack, AC-DC adapter, cigarette lighter adapter, and headphone jack for private listening. Turn the box, <gasps> the features again! Automatic level control, ALC recording. <laughs> if the features, six button cassette recorder, play, stop, fast forward, rewind, record, and pause functions. Tension mechanism receives AM FM broadcasts. Uh, three way power system, 120 volt AC for home use, batteries for portability, 12 volt DC for your car or boat, plus built in recharger circuitry for NICAD rechargeable batteries, not included. External video input jacked, AC adapter included, UL approved. That's actually amazing. Usually they're ETL on the China Pride. Cigarette lighter adapter included. Headphone jack for private listening. Uses 10 C-cell batteries, not included. Distributed by GPX. <gasps> it even shows you everything's at on this little thing. Oh, cassette compartment, cassette buttons, external video input jack, built-in recharger circuitry, DC car cord jack input, telescopic antenna, TV radio station indicator, TV radio station tuning control, TV radio band selector, TV radio power on off switch, headphone jack, and volume control. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. And being mint in the box, it literally has never been used to the point where on the plastic, the red lettering on the clear plastic bag actually stuck to the TV and it, it's kind of like died in there it's part of the white color now that's how long i believe i only got this like two years ago so it spent probably 20 years of its life in the box here's the ac adapter and yes it is ul listed made in china and yes it does include the car adapter and it's spent so long in the box that the styrofoam is like melted to it somehow i just have to take some lighter fluid to it and clean it off but yeah this is as found for the most part even includes a 300 home twin lead to 75 ohm eighth inch jack 3.5 millimeter amazing oh yeah the obligatory gpx instructions including the 90 day warranty card grand prix electronic Printed in China. GPX, portal 5-inch black and white television with AM, FM, radio, and cassette recorder. Model TVP9. I wonder what the 9 stands for. It ain't a no 9-inch. <laughs> That's for sure. Safety instructions. I know they included this, this with all their GPX stereos. Ooh. <laughs> I love how they're just showing that. We know it's an AC adapter. <laughs> the user should not attempt to service the appliance beyond that described in the operating instructions. Refer servicing to qualified per service personnel. Who's going to put on a cart and stand? <laughs> Object of liquid entry. 
So yeah, if you got the GPX, ooh, abnormal smell. <laughs> if an abnormal smell or smoke is detected, immediately turn the power off and pull the power cord from outlet. Contact the service center for assistance. What service center? GPX. The G of doom. Yep, they even list every, sorry for the reflection, every single selector what common sense uh, usage there are. It's pretty amazing, actually, has a NICAD battery charger in it, though. Yep, I'm just quickly glancing at the manual. External antenna jack. External video input jack. Wait till you see that. It's going to be funny. Oh yeah, it actually has a built-in microphone too. I wouldn't have expected that from GP. Oh, there it is, automatic level control recording system. Oh, they boast that like you wouldn't believe, like it's a good thing. It's only a good thing in certain circumstances. But theirs is, well, not very good, obviously. And look how they messed up this drawing here, okay? They say this is the, oh, sorry for the light reflection. This is the capstan and this is the pinch roller. The capstan's up against the pinch roller there. That's just the um, little peg that sticks up that helps align the cassette. They screwed up big time there. GPX. Ooh, it even gives specifications. NTSC M system. It still does UHF 14 through 83. Antenna in input impedance. CRT, five inch diagonal, 70 degree deflection. Actually, that's pretty bad. That's why the TV's so deep. 70 degree deflection? Wow. Resolution, more than 280 horizontal lines. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, if seriously, um, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I would say, I mean, broadcast TV is 300 to 330 lines. So I was a little surprised by it. There you go. That's why it sounds so weak and tinny. 300 milliwatts, and it's not even properly rated because you know that GE Fidelity wants 500 milliwatts and it has a lot of bass and trouble and gets very loud. Again, not rated correctly. Yep, that's all the accessories and everything. So yeah, <laughs> GPX. So here's the GPX personal television AM FM cassette recorder. Yep, it tunes all the way up to channel 83 still. VHF low, VHF high, UHF, radio, TV, power off. Volume control, headphone jack, microphone, and the automatic level control recording cassette recorder by Tennyson. Permanent magnet erase head, DC bias. Typical tennis layout. Tuning knob. Telescoping antenna. Grand Prix. Manufactured September 1997. And on the bottom is all, are all the inputs. You got your external antenna. 12 volts in. Power or charge functions. And get this. Line level video in. That's red in color. There's no audio in. It's just video on this model. Don't know why, but it's kind of dumb. Then you have vertical hold, contrast, and brightness. This is the 300 milliwatt speaker. That little bit of um, dying done from the bag it bled in. But otherwise, mint in the box. Let's hook it up. Okay, we are plugged in. Let's, tr let's extend the antenna. This has a very short and stubby antenna. All right, let's try the radio functions first. Oh, you can tell how bad it is already, can't you? It's not even there. 
Thanksgiving. That's FM. What station is this? This is AM. to be like very precise where you land to pick up otherwise That was not pleasant at all. Yeah, it can't work, but you gotta be really precise with how you land this. I didn't spend the time to, because you just ever so slightly move it and it's off frequency. Okay, let's turn on the TV. not even like making this all here is the vertical oscillator being put through the speakers I don't hear any snow or anything that's weird maybe it's a dirty contact let me turn it off weird what if it this audio for the TV doesn't work <laughs> anyways let's try something different here this is a little hard to um, do. My new camera does not like CRT televisions, and the picture is actually more of a neutral gray than blue. But I am quite surprised, actually. The picture quality on this one actually looks decent. <laughs> However, I'm using the line level video input jack for, to do this. Okay? So. I can put video to it, but I can't put audio to it. I just get snow from the tuner. So that doesn't do me any good. That's kind of a dumb way to option the TV. Have, have offering line level in, but do that. But yeah, other than that, I honestly say it does look rather decent. I'm very surprised. Yeah, I'm doing using the DVD player's menu, and it actually is very sharp. I'm actually very surprised. And yes, I am using a vintage, <laughs> I think to say it like it, 2000 model Apex DVD player. I'm gonna do a separate video series on, on these because um, there's a reason. I actually started to collect these for what you wouldn't believe. These, let me get to this point. These were the China Pride DVD players back in the day. These were the first ones. They were inexpensive, and by inexpensive, I mean they were like, they were still a couple, 100 to $200 when these came out compared to other brands. But there's a reason why I like these. 
Um, back in the day, they made a big deal about them being the first to play MP3s. But there's another reason why I like these, and I'll show it right now. If you hit eject, and on the remote, if you press um, 8, 4, 2, 1, it brings up a menu. You can, I don't care about this because I only have region 1 DVD, so you can make it region free by setting it to 9, but you can turn off macro vision. That is perfect for playing on older televisions and let alone being able to hook it to VCRs of any kind, let them use those as an RF modulator or even copy two tapes for personal use, obviously. But yeah, Macrovision I have disabled. It's a loophole menu. And pretty much these very early apexes were known for that. And you gotta give it credit, it still works 21, almost 22 years later. And, you know, I'm fine with that. And the DVD drive is just the standard IDE drive. And it actually has weight to it, too. It's a nice VFD. Um, stuff we would have laughed at back then is actually better built than most of the crap we have today. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's, tr let's try the tuner now. Okay, I brought up the 1988-89 Technica OEM Funai. Yeah, but it's member before 92. Good Funai. Uh, made in Japan. Heavy. Well built. Nice VFD. This is, the, this is the model underneath the Hi-Fi stereo version. This is the linear stereo version of Dolby. But otherwise, a very nice machine. I'll pull up the program on here. And I'm, again, surprised. And it looks like the TV tuner actually does mute the audio off the station. Watch this. You go off that, audio disappears. But I'll put it back on three. Though you do have to get it right. It doesn't light like bright text. Buzzes could use a slight IF alignment. Or it could just be the nature of that jungle I see in there. I don't know. Either way, let's go get a tape and pop in for this. Well, let's see what happens here. Buzzy, buzzy. Oh, so that's still pretty poor. copyright hits it's playing it damn near perfect I am very very surprised but yeah I mean I can I can enter forward search yeah this is a forehead unit it's very good special effects DuckTales really had some of the best background music, too, from the first season to the last. I have part of it uh, downloaded, too, uh, the actual background tracks. I wish I could find every one of them. Because that's when they really put effort in the theme songs and background music back in the 80s and early 90s. What do you get today? Nothing. I don't even watch TV today. But, yeah. Plays perfectly with this VCR. Uh, let's see, pause still. 
Yep, it's good. You know what I'm going to try now that I have not tried since I got this? Let's go get an audio cassette and record off the TV. Are you guys ready for GPX's world famous automatic level control recording system? Let's do it. GPX. Done it again. Oh, mummy, mummy, mummy. Be thankful she still loves you, bad boys that you are. Yeah, it's not. This has a really cool mechanism. All right, let's rewind. All right, we're gonna put this in tape mode. Let's turn TV off. No dot on this one. All right, hit play. Let's see what happens. It may be a blow to us, something like that. Gee, I was hoping for some chocolate chips. Good evening, boys. Your loving mother has done it again. Oh, I'm surprised mommy, mommy, again. Mommy. What the hell? This is supposed to be GPX. Be thankful she still loves you, bad boys that you are. I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, I know it still sounds like crap to the TV, but here's the thing. Um, most GPX automatic level control things usually sound horribly distorted or like crap. I'm going to record something, a couple tests, and we're going to play this on a real cassette player just to see how it really performs. But, you know, I'll, re I'll record me doing it now. Let's back up. I'll uh, hit record. We'll just test the internal microphone. GPX. Yeah, I still can't believe this thing has muting on uh, no station. I mean, let me hit play. Yeah, as soon as I pull it in, it locks the audio on. We certainly do, Officer Porowski. Weird. And here's the battery compartment. Foam is still in good shape. Interesting. But yeah, I'm kind of baffled here. I mean, is this some sort of parallel universe this thing came from? I mean, not only that, the cassette deck, it, everything works on it. Rewind fast forward, but... You heard it when it was playing back. It sounded perfectly speed. The speed was stable and everything. Weird. And then the picture quality on the set was actually good. I was that doesn't make any sense. Both the tuner and the line level video in, and the audio. I mean, it actually got loud. That's another thing. I don't have a good answer for this. I mean, seriously, is this some parallel universe GPX or something? I mean, okay, let me go get a real cassette player and let's see how it turned out. Okay, I got out the Beast, the 1982 Realistic Modular 1000. Yet again, another weird, and yet again, another OEM'd Funai product. Again, vintage Funai, totally different animal. And um, I did a quick sample. Let's see what happens. Okay, you hear that background right, noise? Guys, this is the DC GPX model. Now that's what I would expect of a GPX right there, that background hiss. It's not even hiss, it's like the whole background is this noise. That's typical GPX, so that's pretty dead on. T, I can't see them all in one sitting. That's true. TVP9. And I'm recording using the built-in microphone from about three feet away. This is me talking up close to it. Okay, now let's test radio record operation. Uh, no, it's typical GPX, all right. The, the audio is distorted because it processes it poorly. And you can see it just barely clears 10 dB. Minus 10 dB, and you saw it did overshoot a few times, and then it really distorts. It, it, uh, their famous ALC automatic level control couldn't keep up. When you're having friends over, make sure Bob FM is playing in the background. They won't notice the cheap bottle of wine. Try to You can that you just hear the distortion. That's GPX dead on there. I mean, remember that other piece of crap I destroyed? 
That's exactly how it recorded. Okay, TV recording is picking up the vertical oscillator. You can hear it buzzing when text is on the screen. That just sounds terrible. Wow, that sounded bad. DC bias. Wow. background noise is just as loud as the dialogue. So in conclusion here, it's kind of baffling this, that a cassette player is GPX-like in its sound quality, but yet the thing that's un-GPX-like is actually a pretty good speed stability, usually they're full of flutter. And the other thing I'm surprised about is the tuner on this. Um, I'm just saying because, I mean, it, uh, the TV tuner, you know, muting the audio and the tuner itself working surprisingly well. And the line input, too. And the picture looks surprisingly sharp and focused. I don't have a good explanation. The sound quality is poor, obviously, but it actually is loud, considering. The weird part is the volume control does not go all the way down. Uh, this is at minimum. They, they kind of did that poorly, too. And it stops like here when you turn it up too. So technically before I did have it almost all the way up. So yeah. And if you're accustomed to my other GPX videos, you're gonna be a little disappointed to hear that I will not be destroying this one. I'm keeping this one around as a conversation piece. I mean, uh, it is an oddball one, I'll say that. Even more odd that it actually works somewhat decent. But, yeah. Um, so that's it. The GPX TVP9. Thanks for watching. And hit like and subscribe. GPX. GPX.